Hi there. Here's the follow-up uh, on the wonderful experience I had at the Thule Indian Reservation. It was really, really incredible. I'm so grateful that I was invited there. Um, the lady who invited me, and it's invitation only, of course, because it's so sacred and so private. Uh, I met her during uh, evacuation. And she's an educator. I didn't realize um, she's a PhD. She does incredible research and um, very powerful woman who has made her way to the top. Uh, and, and I really respect her and so grateful that she allowed me to come because many times on the way in and the way up and she's like, okay, like if you screw up, it's on me. You know, you're here and I am responsible for you. I'm responsible for what happens to you and I'm responsible for how you behave. So, you know, <laughs> behave yourself so we don't get kicked out. Cause they, they have kicked other people out before and I don't want to get kicked out. I don't want you to get kicked out. I'm like, okay. So I'm trying to behave myself as much as possible. Um, and there's a lot of protocol. It's a spiritual experience, so very much like the Tao and the pranic healing. So I'm like, tell me the rules. I want to know the rules. Just tell me all the rules. And of course, you bump into stuff that you you don't know because they ask you to pray, and then you pray, and then she's like, no, nah, you know, don't share. And I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> I don't know. So um, anyway, so it was just really wonderful. There were dancing at the Thule tribe was so beautiful. They're such sweet, beautiful people. You know, just the, the men and the women. And this was an elder camp. So the elders kind of held the platform. Um, the lady, my friend was saying, you know, usually the there's restrictions on what you can and cannot do as far as the going to the waterfalls or, or being in the river. But this time there's no restriction. It's free for all. And I thought, oh, because grandma and grandpa are here and they're holding mad space because they're the elders. So they're not allowing kind of any kind of negative things to happen. And I was warned about mountain lions and the bears. The bears live there. The mountain lions live there. That's their home and their the Thule tribe a reservation. The people are sharing with the bears. And almost daily we saw a mama and two cubs. And one day the cub even was 10 feet off of the kitchen because it was an outdoor kitchen. And I was 30 feet away from a, from a, like a wild cub who was licking the stones from the, you know, scraps. And no food in the tent. You have to cover the cooler if it's in the car because the bears know what a cooler looks like and they will break into the car for food. Um... So, and the mountain lion, the deal is if you're walking, never walk alone. And if you're walking in a group, they'll either go for the last one on the trail or the smallest one. And if a lion, mountain lion should attack, everybody has to uh, attack the lion so they will not kill the person. So it was like very serious stuff there. Um, we heard the bears at night and saw the bears during the day and it was really it was just really cool because I love bears because my name is Ursula and Ursula is she bear in Latin, Ursa major, Ursa minor. So I feel very connected to the bear. So I was trying to follow protocol and behave myself and not get my friend in trouble. And she also had a student and uh, the student and I slept in my tent, which is my Sufi tent. I bought it for Sufi camp a few years ago and I bought a big one because I always like sharing. And this is my woods house, so I really spent like three hours buying my tent and was so happy with the choices I made because the tent has an extra canopy so I could take the canopy off and we fell asleep to the stars under two giant pine trees, 100, over 100 feet tall. And it was so awesome. And I girlied out my tent, I bought carpeting, I had um, Mel Oliver made a... Uh, dream catcher and had gifted it to me and I had that in the tent I had the healing blanket that Kathy Dickerson made and uh, that was on my bed I had my grandmother's prayer candle uh, altar next to my bed and it was really beautiful and really awesome I got to go and to the waterfalls up there 200 feet down a stone slate I don't know what kind of granite I don't know but it was 200 feet 
and it made a big pool of freezing cold water and another pool and the children kind of made slides and it was so much fun. I floated in there for a while. I love floating, just relaxing the body, relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. And it's, and it's an immediate meditation just to float with my arms spread out and closed eyes connecting to my heartbeat, my breath, and relaxing, relaxing more and more and more. Please do that, it's the most fun thing. I really uh, respect the Thule tribe so much. They invite all the other traditions to come, all the other tribes, the indigenous folks from Canada, South America, across the country, they all came. A giant group from uh, Arizona came and they have a, a, a big area with fire in the middle and each tribe got to dance and their costumes and the songs, it was so beautiful. We did sweat lodges, they had men's, all men's, all ladies, co-ed, and I was able to do five of them all together. It was so, so incredible. And the singing and the prayers, it was just so beautiful. And then I served in the kitchen, the outdoor kitchen, which was a fire, like wood fire burning slab of, I don't know what, metal. And I got to turn potatoes, baked potatoes, foil wrapped potatoes from two to six o'clock. <laughs> it was hot putting wood in there. And the people, they're so beautiful, so beautiful. And still suffering, which broke my heart. I was ashamed to be white. And I was the minority, probably five to eight uh, percent white face there. And I felt terrible. I felt ashamed. Um, and they, they don't, they're not mad. They're just hurt and sad. And the feeling in my heart was really heavy. And it's, it's like abuse. You know, when there's a family, it's a microcosm, macrocosm. When there's a family and there's abusive parents, the eldest will take the hit mostly. And they just F with them and they, they're just so mean. When there's abusive parents and there's a child and they're just so mean and it's just unfair and the child's trying to stand up to the parent and the parent's like, no. And, and it gets worse and worse and it's, I just watched the Native Americans and the, and the government. I'm like, that's not right, that's not right. And for me to stand by, like as, a, as another child, a privileged child, just because of my skin and my heritage, I have privileges that my brothers and sisters don't have. And, and I want to not be like that. I want us to all be included. And, and I went to the website afterward to see how I can minimum donate. And they don't even have a donation button. They have a section for donation, like if you need a donation, we're here to support you because it was a interior website for the locals. Um, and I just, I just wish that we could hear their stories because I think as America starts to crumble a little bit more and more because we've we've gotten too greedy and too self-centered and too fat and lazy and ignorant as a country, I think uh, I think we're going to get whacked somehow. The the government that collapse. I don't I don't know what's going to go on, but I think you know, just knowing nature, there's going to be some kind of disruption and we're going to be humbled. And I hope during this humbling that the Native Americans can start sitting with us and start telling stories about respect, about kindness, about the ways of the land, about nature, because they're awesome at that. And, and I just want to listen and hear. Also, I met this lady. She, um, she was really like a wild woman, just no filter, tons of fun laughing and we were after all that potato time I was hanging out in the dining area and met her and we just connected like that no filter like just lively conversation and, and about re reality and family and depth and she's talking and we became friends immediately and she's like yeah I'm from the bear tribe and I'm like oh yeah bear I love bears and then we're talking and talking and she's like, yeah, I'm a doctor, you know, I have two clinics and an emergency clinic. I'm like, wow, you know, she's so, she could be prestigious and snooty and she's not at all. She was just humble and real. 
And then somebody came over and said, hey, uh, this is the bear guy, the, the chief of the bear from this community or whatever. I don't know how it all works. And she's like, oh, great. So I'm like, okay, you know, see you later. I know you got to meet with that person. She's like, get out of here. Come here with me. And I'm like, oh, my God. I get to sit, and it's chief. It's a chief, the bear chief of that area. And so they're like, yeah, this is Uncle Mike. Like, Uncle Mike, I'm calling the chief Uncle Mike. Because everybody calls each other Uncle this and Uncle that. And it's like a who's who of how do we connect. And I'm the nephew of the uncle of the guy of the, this tribe. And it was very interesting for me to watch that. So I ended up being invited to the bear sweat lodge before the bear ceremony. Where at the bear ceremony, it was the final thing for the big night and 10, 1030 at night. And the, these gentlemen, so we're in the bear sweat, and they're really loud. The songs are really loud, and I felt so at home. And I'm not a loud person, but just singing along with them, I just was like, these are my people. We get to the circle. The men are having a real bear head and real bear uh, skin on them. It's hot enough as it is. They're dancing around a fire, dancing, 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 dancing. And uh, then they're like, hey, everybody, come on in the circle. And then we did like a Congo line, you know, where you just keep dancing with the person in front of you, having your hands on their shoulders. And it was incredible. And then they're like, okay, everybody who wants a healing, stay in the circle. I'm like, healing? What? All the other tribes danced. And I'm like, healing? These are the healing tribe? Like, this, the, they have healing dance? And I was just so touched. I'm like, oh, my God. Not only are they bare, they're healers. And I got so sucked in and so invited in and so celebrated in. It was amazing, 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 amazing. It, it was just amazing. I was so, then the next day, so I come home, then we did another sweat at the end for them to clear off all the healing that they had done for the people. And they even invited me and almost insisted, like, they're like, okay, you do a song. And I'm like, I, I, was, I don't know a song. And they're like, then you have to do a prayer. And I'm like, okay. So I just did a prayer in gratitude for all the healing of all the suffering and the addiction and the abuse and things that are going on inside of them. Like, heal, please heal, because we need the Native Americans to rise up and lead. We need them to lead. So the next day, I'm walking on the beach with Hale, my housemate, back here in Carpinteria. And I look down, and what do I see? This. This bear was on the beach, right at my feet, covered in tar, but oil, because that's, that's how it is over there. And I was like, oh my God. So come on, come on. Can you believe it? So thanks for listening. I am so happy to share. Thank you.